Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be doing a Disney DIY craft project. This project is something I've been wanting to do for a long time and I finally went to Hobby Lobby and got my craft supplies and today is the day. We are going to be making a display for my Disney pin collection. I got the inspiration for this craft on Pinterest, I think, and then my mom and I came up with some ways to make it a little bit more my style, so I'm very excited to try this out today. I know that a lot of people who collect pins like to display their entire pin collection on a large piece of cork board on the wall, but for me, I was looking for something a little more decorative. So I'm very excited to show you my pin collection and make this DIY craft project with you today. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this, and I will go grab my pin collection. Okay, here's my very small pin collection, some Disney and some not. Um, and they're just all jumbled together in this little box, I know, which is why we're doing this project today. And then I have a few others on my lanyard, which I use for pin trading. So let me take you guys down off the tripod and I'll give you a closer look. So I'll start with this lanyard that has my trading pins on it. It's just this pink um, lanyard with purple lettering. I got this years and years ago, probably on one of my first trips to Disney. And I'll show you the few that I have on here. These are ones that um, are not special to me that I would be willing to trade in the parks. And actually, as I go through my collection today, if I find any that I want to part with, I may put those up for sale on Mercari. So I'll definitely leave a link to my shop below. Um, but this first one here is a Minnie Mouse pin from 2020. I feel like this one is kind of a collectible pin because not very many of us were able to go to the parks in 2020. So that one's pretty cool to have. And then I have Dale. I remember when I got this, the cast member was telling me how to tell the difference between Chip and Dale. Um, so if you don't know, they look exactly the same. Um, but Chip has a brown nose that looks like a chocolate chip. And then this one with the red nose is how you know it's Dale. Then I also have this uh, Mickey Mouse with lots of rainbow colored rhinestones. He's so colorful with all of the pink and blue and green uh, stones. At first I thought it was Minnie Mouse, but um, there's no bow, so this is a very blinged out Mickey. <laughs> and then this one is fairly new. This is a Skyliner pin, so it's one of the Skyliner gondolas, and it has the little green men from Toy Story. And if you'll notice here, there is a little hidden Mickey in the blue part of the Skyliner. And now for the box. My poor little pins are going to be so happy to be out on display and not have to live in this tiny box anymore. <laughs> Let me dump these out and I will kind of sort them into categories and show you what I have. There's some Disney, some Universal, some like sci-fi pins. I have all kinds of stuff in here. All right, these are the other Disney pins that I have other than what was on the lanyard. Um, and I know the lighting's not very good right now. It's starting to get dark outside, but I will hold each of these up to the camera so that you can see. Um, most recently, I got this 50th anniversary pin, which you will have seen if you watched my Disney haul video. And it's got Mickey and Minnie and their iridescent outfits and the number 50. Um, I'm not really a huge pin collector, but this is definitely something that I wanted to have in my collection. It's very special that I was able to go on the 50th anniversary. Next, I have this Iron Man Avengers pin. Um, I was able to get this at a discount at one of the um, Disney outlet stores, I think. Um, Iron Man is my favorite Avenger. And now that Marvel is part of Disney now, this is an official Disney pin. You can see on the back, it has the uh, Disney print. Um, it's just so strange to me still to see Marvel and Star Wars and like even the Muppets, which I have a Muppets pin um, as part of the Disney franchise now. That's just so strange, but I love it. Uh, this one is Frozone from The Incredibles. I got this quite a long time ago at um, Hollywood Studios back when it was called MGM Studios. Uh, Frozone was one of my favorite Pixar characters at the time. And then I have little Olaf here. He's just so adorable. Um, I think they do have a Frozen kind of musical theater show in Hollywood Studios, um, which I still haven't seen. I need to go and check that out. And this one is a Minnie Mouse pin. It says Minnie in pink letters, and there's a little heart in the exclamation mark at the end. And it has this kind of charm um, on the bottom. It's not one piece, it's two pieces that are linked together in the middle. And you've got Minnie Mouse with her, um, her little purse. Then there's Jiminy Cricket. This is a very nostalgic character for me. Um, even though he comes from Pinocchio, the movie, which is really not one of my favorites. But 
I just love the character of Jiminy Cricket, and I think um, I think the reason that he is nostalgic is because he was in maybe some Disney sing-along videos, I think. Okay, so Billy's just told me that Jiminy Cricket is actually a character in um, Fun and Fancy Free and Mickey's Christmas Carol. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> the next pin I have is actually from the Muppets. There is a Muppets attraction in Hollywood Studios. It's called Muppet Vision 3D and it's a 3D show. Let me know in the comments if you already know who this character is from if you are a fan of the Muppet show. Um, so this is Sam Eagle from the Muppets. He's like the very um, rule following, um, trying to keep everybody in line type of character on the Muppet show. <laughs> And this pin is actually from the Disney Cruise Line. My parents brought this back for me when they went on a Disney cruise. So it's made to look like a little passport and it says Disney Cruise Line at the bottom. And then it actually opens up to look like a real passport. You've got all the little stamps on this side for all the, the ports um, that I guess the Disney cruises go to all these places. And then uh, there's Mickey's, uh, Captain Mickey's picture as if this is Mickey's passport. I always think it's fun when pins have moving parts like this, um, like where this one opens up or the Minnie Mouse um, pin that I showed you guys that's like a little charm. I just think that makes them cooler when they, when they move. And then I saved my favorite Disney pin for last. This is my Winnie the Pooh pin. It says, oh bother. And it has Winnie the Pooh with his head stuck in a honey pot looking for the last little drop of honey. Winnie the Pooh is one of my favorite Disney characters and I love this pin the most. And to go along with my pins, I just have this little pack of extra pin backs. These are the little Mickeys that go on the back of your pin like this. And you can buy these at the parks in any place that they sell pins. Um, but it's just nice to have some extras in case um, you lose a couple. Now these are my non-Disney pins. I'm going to move through these pretty quickly because I know you guys are here for the Disney. This pin is from Universal Studios Orlando. It has a Dr. Seuss style fish in the middle. And I'll turn it sideways, you can see it's actually like a snow globe, kind of a glass bubble. And it says on the pin, in my own bubble. Um, so I thought this was really cute. I wanted to have a pin from Universal since we also like to go to that park as well as Disney. And I purchased this, I guess, in uh, Seuss Land at Islands of Adventure. This one is also from Universal. It says, save the green planet. And it has a little E.T.'s hand in there from the E.T. attraction at Universal. And this is not a, an enamel pin. This is just like a button, you know, with a little safety pin thing on the back. Um, so I think I may just toss this one unless you guys want it. But I think I got this for free or something for being a universal annual pass holder. And then the last few pins I have are just totally random. They have nothing to do with theme parks. I just picked these up at various places over the years. Um, I have a Batman one. Um, I'm not really a fan of the newer Batman movies. I'm a Marvel fan, but I did love to watch the, um, I think it was 1960s, um, Batman TV show. So this is kind of the logo from that. Then I have two Star Trek pins. This one, let me hold it still so you can see this one. You can't really see too well, but in the middle it says Star Trek The Next Generation. It has the, that uh, logo in the middle. And then here's the Starship Enterprise, and it moves. You know how I like moving parts on my pins. And then I also have this phaser uh, pin from Star Trek. And then these three over here on the side are all Doctor Who. I'm a big sci-fi fan, and I'm currently watching the most recent season of Doctor Who with Jodie Whittaker. Um, let me know in the comments if any of you guys watch Doctor Who as well. I have such a hard time finding other people that love that show. But anyway, this is the TARDIS. Um, which is the kind of time-traveling spaceship that the main character of the show uses to travel on his and her adventures. Then the other two I have are Doctor Who villains. This one is a Cyberman, and this one is a Dalek. Okay, so here's my plan for the DIY project. I've got a frame here, I've got some colored paper, and I have a foam board. Um, do you know what I mean by that? Like when you go to the school supply section at the store, it's like a big poster board, but it's thicker and it's made of kind of a foam. It's called foam board or foam core. So that's actually what's underneath. That's my background right now. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna cut a piece of foam board the size of the picture frame 
and then cover it with one of these decorative papers and then I can push the pins into it. And I went with the colored papers because I just don't like the look of cork board. That's just not something that I wanted to, to have to like look at as a decoration. So I found these really pretty papers. Um, all of this stuff is from Hobby Lobby. The frame was uh, $14.99 on sale for 50% off. But of course you could get absolutely any frame for this project. You could get one at the Dollar Tree or Walmart or a thrift store and you could paint it or stain it whatever color you want to match your decor. Um, but I just went with this plain wood color. I like the very natural look to it. And you guys have got to see this scrapbook paper that I found. So they had a section of um, eight and a half by 11 scrapbook pages and I just found the most beautiful choices. Obviously I'm only gonna be able to use one at a time, but you know, if I ever get tired of my arrangement, I can just change out the paper. So this one here, it's got like this marbled look to it. It has all different shades of blue and teal and purple and pink. I just thought this was beautiful. Then I got this plant pattern as well. I just love the color green. I think it's one of my favorite colors. And um, we live in Florida, so this looked very Florida planty to me. And then this, I know you guys saw this in the back of the pile. This looks just like the Toy Story um, wallpaper on Andy's wall. It's blue and it has the clouds. I got so excited when I saw this in the store. I was not expecting to find something um, this close to an actual Disney print. Um, so I'm definitely going to be using this one. So the process for putting this all together is pretty self-explanatory, I think, but um, I guess I will do a little time lapse um, while I measure and cut out my pieces. Okay, so I've just cut out my pieces of foam board and paper and I want to show you guys something. So what I did was I removed the back piece of the frame and I removed the glass. We're just going to discard the glass. So I turned my frame upside down and I put my Toy Story paper in first because we want that to be on the front, the part that shows. And then something I noticed is when I put the foam core in the back of that, and then I tried to put the back um, on the frame. It was a little bit of a tight fit. I really had to push to get everything in there. So if you'll notice, let me see if I can. Okay, so I've zoomed in quite a bit. Um, I want you to be able to see. This is the back of the frame. I've got just my paper in here. And there's like a lip, um, like an indentation around the edge of the frame. And that's where, when you put the back of the frame in, this um, edge of the back goes into the indentation of the frame. I hope that makes sense. So when I put the foam board on top of the paper, it almost covers up that indentation where the back is supposed to fit in. So you just really have to press down um, on everything when you put all those pieces together. You just really have to press down so that there's enough room for this to go into the lip inside the frame. So I just wanted to point that out. I hope that makes sense, <laughs> um, but it will work. All right, so I've put all of the pieces of the frame back together. I've got that paper on the front, the foam board in the middle, and then I reattached the back of the frame so that I can use the stand. I did put a small piece of packing tape right here on the back because although I was able to press down and wedge the back um, up into the frame, 
I wasn't, there's not enough room for me to pull this uh, latch closed at the bottom. So it kind of, um, so it's not very secure at the bottom. It kind of comes out a little bit. So I just put this piece of tape here um, to hold it in place, but I did not use any tape or glue or anything on the inside to hold the paper and the foam core together because when we put the pins through, that's gonna attach all the pieces. So I think it's so pretty. Now I get to pick out what pins I wanna have on display. done what do you think I love it so I picked a Sam Eagle uh, my Mickey and Minnie 50th Olaf and Jiminy Cricket to put on display first um, and then like I said I have the different papers and pins where I can change out the design anytime and the depth of the the pins like the part that you stick into the material it was just the right length to go through the foam board but not through the back of the frame there is nothing poking through back there I would love to see what creative ideas you guys come up with for displaying your pins. If you decide to do a DIY project like this or any type of pin display, um, please go and tag me on Instagram. I would love to see your creativity and your designs. This was so much fun. Thank you for hanging out with me today. There you have it, my very first Disney DIY project. If you wanna see more projects like this, please give this video a like to let me know. I do have some other fun ideas of craft projects that we could do on this channel to make some Disney home decor. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.